So the train bridge that I made in the last video basically is getting scrapped. Then there's two good reasons for this. The first being the accuracy of how I centered the holes. Um, as if you've seen the video, you'll know that I pushed the jewels out and I was basically centering off that existing hole. The thing is that brass is soft and it's very thin and it's quite easy to have a small deformation on the hole. And what that makes hard is when you're looking through the centering scope, trying to center that hole on the lathe, center that hole on the lathe, is that <clears throat> that slight deformation, it's very hard to tell whether, that is a, whether that's a deformation or actually the hole is a bit off center and it's a bit wonky. And even though it's probably you know, very minute distances for this type of work, I think it matters. And the second reason being that I drilled the holes out and when I really should have bored the holes out. And I wanted to bore the holes out, I did. That was the plan from the beginning. Let me show you the issue trying to use this tool to bore the 1.8 millimeter hole. So basically here's the, um, 1.8 millimeter hole blown up seven times see with the one millimeter tool the bottom of the tool actually hits the hole so i can't bore a hole all the way through the material the 0.5 millimeter tool has clearance everywhere which is perfect and at the beginning of last week i made these two new lathe tools this is the original one millimeter lathe tool and these two and these two are both 0.5 millimeters. One of them is a left hand turning tool and the other is a right hand turning tool. So once I got the second problem solved, it was time to solve the first problem. And this is where I hit a lot of problems. So the issue with the uh, faceplate I was using on the American watchmaker's lathe is that it's actually too large in diameter to fit onto the cow's lathe. Um, so cows have their own faceplate, which is more like a a center lathe faceplate, not like a watchmaker's lathe faceplate. In the previous episode, what I did is I actually took the drawers off this faceplate and I used them on here. But the issues with that, because this is a lot thicker and it uses a adapter to fit onto the headstock, as you can see, the adapter flange here is a large diameter and when I use the drawers from the American uh, watchmaker's faceplate. I actually can't move it to its lowest position because the locking nut hits the flange. The other issue with this arrangement is if the jaws have to be at the extremities of the grooves in the faceplate, I actually hit the bed. So it really limits what I can and can't do by using this faceplate. I try to come up with other methods using a bolt and I was making these um, locking nuts to use this faceplate, but it doesn't work at all. So um, yeah, I tried a few different things, different ways. Um, ultimately, I would have probably just had to remake these jaws, but then this sits so far forward that I'm gonna hit the bed anyway. So I really was getting nowhere fast and I wasn't making any progress. And you know, I was trying to get um, the video of making parts out for you guys, but then I remembered I had the Sensei watchmaker's faceplate. So this faceplate is made in China for the Sensei watchmaker's lathe, which if you don't know is the Chinese watchmaker's lathe. And it's a lot smaller in diameter to its American counterpart, which allows me to fit it nicely into the cow's lathe. And then I tested it to see if the, um, if the taper on the spindle fit and it fits perfectly 
and I bought and, and at the time I had bought this adjustable drawbar which was sitting collecting dust for so long so what it is is the end is adjustable it can fit onto different lathes depending on the spindle lengths and you know this was a lifesaver so the great thing about the Chinese watchmakers faceplate is that if I move these jaws into its lowest position the locking nut doesn't hit any of the spindle components as it would with the cow's faceplate with the jaws attached. Also at the extremities, I don't hit the bed at all. There's clearance from the bed, so it fits. So it works well perfectly with this uh, gap bed section that the cow's lathe has. The Chinese faceplate is a lot smaller. Um, it's, obviously, it's obviously more restrictive so the internal circle is the diameter of the movement and I cut these three sort of indentations out. Um, I saw this on a Latitz watchmaking video and I didn't know why they did it at the time but it makes perfect sense. And so what the plan is to do with this piece is to cut the barrel bridge, the train bridge and the balance cock recesses all at once. And so how I do that will be in the next episode which will be released at the end of this week Guys, thanks for tuning in. My apologies, I didn't have more to show you. You know, this is the journey and I think that um, this week is more of a learning experience. I couldn't have learned it personally just by thinking about it. It's something that I've learned by doing. And that's the, the way that I learn best. And I think that there's gonna be a lot more hurdles in the future, but I think my approach to overcoming them will be different and I'll bring you guys aboard and I'm going to sort of show it more in detail. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see any of my upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or something you want to say, feel free to leave it in the comment section below.